Hey guys, it's Manny, and I decided to do the car plus strong algorithm for the guitar. And this is what it sounds like. Alrighty. So, the first thing we do in the main driver is we set up the keys, and the keys just map out all these characters to their corresponding frequency and we add those to a vector called strings and then we can just pluck the strings and uh, tick them which just advances the car plus strong algorithm and then we can sample all them together and the real magic happens inside the guitar string class so we create a guitar string with the constructor by uh, supplying the frequency and then that's divided by the sampling rate by the frequency. So if you have a higher frequency, you're going to have a smaller sized ring buffer. And that's because you are defining a certain number of doubles for the duration of a single wavelength. So that's why if you have a high frequency, it's going to be a smaller ring buffer. And we can pluck them. And what that essentially does is it fills the string with white noise and that just pretty much sets it up to uh, pretty much be sampled after you call the tick method and what the tick method does is it takes the average of the first double in the ring buffer and the second double averages them out and multiplies them by the energy decay factor which decays the sound over time because decay factor is less than one and if you multiply something by something that's less than one it'll always reduce in size and at the end of this we can sample it so to show you what the ring buffer is ring buffer is essentially just an array of doubles in this case and it just has a bunch of just normal stuff you'd find in any place to store your things uh, the most important thing is that you can NQ and you can DQ. And the thing that's special about a ring buffer is that when you NQ something or DQ, once you add in more data, it pretty much wraps around in a cyclical fashion. So you can, uh, after you DQ, you can NQ something right where you just DQ'd and then you can have a constant stream. And that's useful because we're constantly DQing in the guitar string class. When we call, where is it? When we call tick, we always DQ the first one and then we NQ a new sample by the average of those first two samples uh, that we have. And yeah, so an important method in this class is called wrap. So when you try to insert something that's greater than the length of the array, it'll just wrap your index so you can place it where it needs to go. So moving on to the music canvas, which is uh, this window, it's gonna hold the visualizer. So if we go back to our driver, we set up the music canvas and we have a visualizer here and the visualizer is the thing that's actually inside the window so this thing is the visualizer which is pretty much just a panel it it, it extends the J panel and then the actual window extends J frame if you've ever used the swing library so this is the music canvas and then the stuff inside is the visualizer which is just an element that I added so over here we add to the canvas the visualizer and then we just this is just kind of useless stuff just sets up the size of the other window that captures the keys and pretty much what we do is for the duration of the program we look what did the user type and if they type something that corresponds to a key let's pluck that key and then let's sample all those keys and then let's play that sample and then let's continue the car plus strong algorithm so that we can have the next sample play in the next iteration of the loop and then we send that sample to the visualizer so 
This is just a container for the visualizer, pretty much the music canvas class. And inside the visualizer, we have a method called update sample, which we called from the main class right here. That just sends the sample to the visualizer to update the waveform. And essentially, the visualizer has its own ring buffer that has a size of uh, the ring buffer has a width that is equivalent to the window width in this in this case it's a thousand pixels so this ring buffer is going to have a thousand doubles in it and what we do is we just NQ the new sample and then that pretty much just cycles around and then we're able to paint our ring buffer and the way we do that is for every single double inside the ring buffer we're gonna draw it at its corresponding X value on the window and then we're gonna draw it at its Y value which would be the magnitude of the double at that position and the rest of this code is really just adding anti-aliasing and modifying the stroke which is like the thickness of the line and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed.